levels of awareness, ordinary human awareness and higher levels of awareness are something that you can do a lot of reading about and you can study spiritual literature. But until you begin to put it into practice and live it each and every day, it really just uh, is something that is distant and more academic. What I will be attempting to do here this evening is to share with you some very specific principles. I am not here to um, proselytize for any particular point of view. I don't represent any religion. I'm not organizing anybody or encouraging anybody to join anything. I think a truth is a truth very often until you organize it. And then it becomes a lie very often because the organization becomes more important than the truth that we're attempting to uh, teach. So this is not really about getting people to, uh, to agree with me. When I was back in school, I had professors who used to say, if you want to understand poetry, or if you want to understand a great novel, or if you want to understand a great movie, or enjoy it, what you have to do is practice what he called willingly suspending your disbelief. So that when you go into a movie theater, for example, you will see a two-dimensional screen. And you don't walk in and say, well, that's just a two-dimensional screen with a lot of... Uh, a lot of images that are being projected from the rear of the room from a uh, projector and I'm not going to allow my emotions to be impacted or affected by a silly little thing like a projector. Uh, if you did that, you would not be able to enjoy the movie. What you do is you willingly suspend your disbelief. Some of it will conflict with some of the things that you have been conditioned to believe in. Some of the things that uh, you may hold very dear to your heart. And I'm not here to challenge them. I'm not here to get you to change your point of view. I'm not get here to get you to join some organization that I think uh, will uh, get you to be more enlightened. I'm just offering you what comes from my heart, uh, principles that are involved in being able to reach higher and higher and higher levels of awareness so that things like miracles and uh, being able to attract into your life what has been missing up until now the ability to heal yourself of perhaps uh, diseases or processes of, uh, uh, of difficulty that you've never been able to uh, handle before, the capacity to be able to uh, create the kind of uh, relationship that you would like to have, the ability to uh, even get a job that perhaps you haven't been able to get or to raise your level of prosperity. Um, whatever it might be, to sell your home, if you've been having difficulty doing that, that there is an energy in the universe. There is something that is in each and every one of us. And it's also in the universe. And you are connected to it in a way that is often uh, perceived to be uh, oh, aloof from us because it's invisible, because it's in the world of what we call spirit, the world that is not material. And I would like to suggest that you suspend your disbelief, allow yourself to know that you're not a human being here having a spiritual experience, but that is the other way around, that you're a spiritual being having a human experience. And the quality of your human experience is really much more dependent upon how you use this invisible intelligence and how you connect to this energy. And once you have an awareness that you can never be separate from it, that you and it, and whatever you call it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you call it God, if you call it divine presence, if you call it soul, if you call it spirit, if you call it consciousness, if you call it Christ consciousness, you can call it Buddha consciousness, you can call it Louise, you can call it Edna, you can call it Ralph. Alan Watts once said that you can't get wet from the word water. It isn't the word that allows you to experience water. And whatever it is that you call it is something that is distinct from what it is. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And this isn't just a clever play on words here. This is a quantum truth. As my friend Deepak Chopra has often said to me, quantum physics is not only stranger than you think it is, 
It's stranger than you can think. So that if you look at your origination, the place that you came from, this thing that uh, Lao Tzu called the Tao, this great source that is everywhere, there is no place that it is not, and yet it is doing nothing, and yet it leaves nothing undone. If you go out and just go for a walk this afternoon when you get home, just look at the perfection of all that is. Just look at the clouds and look at the sky and look at the ocean and look at the trees and look at the leaves and even more important, look at the space between the leaves and look at the invisibleness and the perfection of how everything is. There's a constancy, if you will. And this constancy is always there. And your goal my goal in the time that I have with you here today is to convince you to go to a place within yourself where you can emulate that divine perfection which requires you to do nothing, which never uses force, which never pushes itself, which recognizes something. I'm going to read to you just one of the verses of the Tao and a little bit of what I wrote about it. And I seldom read to an audience because I don't like being read to myself. But I'm just going to share a little bit of this. Here's what Lao Tzu said in verse 29. Do you think you can take over the universe and improve it? I do not believe it can be done. Everything under heaven is a sacred vessel and cannot be controlled. Trying to control leads to ruin. Trying to grasp, we lose. As long as I'm incarnated into a physical world, there's a time for all of it. You begin to look at all the things that are happening to you because you remember one of the most, verse 40 of the Tao says, it's all about returning. The first nine months of your life, you lived inside of your mother's womb. Nobody could get in there and, and get you to worry about anything. You didn't have sonograms that you'd look at and say, my God, I don't have a nose yet. What the hell's going on? I hope, I sure hope I get a nose. And you got into nose therapy and you worry about it. Over. So what if it doesn't happen? What? And all of a sudden, perfectly, it all unfolds in exactly the way it's going to unfold, independent of your opinion about it. You were totally, completely at peace with it. You were surrendered to it. You allowed it. It wasn't a struggle. It wasn't... A... And then you popped out of there. And then you said, thank you, God. Thank you, Tao. Thank you, Source. We'll take over from here. And that was the biggest mistake. All of a sudden, you took over. And you edged God out. E-G-O. You edged God out. And you took on an ego, didn't you? And what is an ego? It's just an idea. Just an idea about who you are. Instead of being a piece of God, a piece of the source, you decided, and those around you decided, that you were something different. And if you studied quantum physics, and you took the tiny little particle that began you and you looked at, tried to find out where it came from and reduced it down to its tiniest sub, sub, subatomic properties, ultimately you would discover what Lao Tzu knew, that it's the spirit that gives life, that you didn't come from a particle, that particles do not create particles, particles do not come from particles. Originally, all particles come from an energy, a field of energy that has no beginnings and no ends and no boundaries. And that's who you are. 